Hey, this is Attorney Mike Gravel. I'm coming to you from Chicago, and today we're going to look at Better Call Saul, Season 2, Episode 7. It's very good, and you're going to like it. And this intro comes with 50% more Chicago skyline at no additional cost. Well, that was fun but awkward. I just filmed that intro at a rooftop pool next to some complete strangers. Welcome to Law Talk. So this uh, episode starts with some unfinished business. Uh, previously, Mike had set up Tuco and uh, made him commit a crime in front of police officers, including uh, using his gun. Um, Tuco's uncle comes to him and basically forces him to go to the police and say that the gun was his. And uh, that happens now. Um, Mike chooses to bring Jimmy McGill with him for this uh, event, and it's hilarious. Uh, just watch Mike's face as, as Jimmy goes off and tries to make an explanation as to why Mike's prints are on the gun. He's not a forensics expert. Who knows? Maybe it uh, fell from a passing bird's beak and Mr. Salamanca caught it and tried to throw it away. I mean, the possibilities are endless. So Needless to say, the police are not buying Jimmy's story, nor did Jimmy expect them to. But then he does hit them with his real leverage. If you try to introduce it in evidence, Mr. Aaron Trout will make himself available to the defense and he will set the record straight, categorically and unequivocally. Did he threaten you or pay you off? Whoa! Afterwards, Jimmy tries to make Mike feel better about the whole situation and relate to him. You're doing the right thing. The Salamanca character, maniac. I had my own thing with him. I didn't want to say it before because conflict of interest, yada yada, but... All that conflict of interest line is good. It's funny on so many levels. Uh, first of all, he's, he's committing felonies left and right. He first comes in contact uh, with uh, Tuco Salamanco because he was trying to commit insurance fraud. Uh, his conflict of interest, which I don't really see where it exists, and if it did, nothing's changed it, but... Um, his conflict of interest under any circumstance is the least of his concerns. If you like any of this content, the best way to support me and the channel is to hit like, subscribe, share with friends, and put some comments in the comment section below. Now we're back at Davis in Maine and uh, Jimmy is talking to Omar, the only likable person in that entire firm, uh, about resigning from his position. But as he does so, he realizes there's a snag. The bonus is a done deal. They already cut me the check. I get to keep the bonus. Not if you quit. Before a certain term, I think yours is a year, you have to pay the money back. So Jimmy throws this conference in reverse as quick as possible. Omar, that whole uh, letter of resignation thing, that I didn't mean that. Not a word. <laughs> okay, this next bit is real good. Jimmy stopped at a light and he starts identifying with this inflatable, you know, advertising balloon. And uh, it, it sets up uh, the, the, the next big thing that happens in this episode. And, it, and also a great, great montage, which, uh, which I won't show, but uh, go back and watch it. It's, it's really good. So based on his uh, interaction with the inflatable, Jimmy uh, hatches a plan which is absolutely hilarious and you can see it starting here. <laughs> This spawns a lot of great comedy, and it is also the uh, basis for this episode's favorite line, delivered in a shark skin suit. Someone is not flushing. Once is an accident, maybe even twice, three times, and uh, that's the pattern. And we're not talking about a number one. Yes, thank you, Aaron. Now, I'm not here to shame anyone nor to even want to know who did it, but uh, Cliff, it was me. This next one is an obvious gag, but it is so, so well executed. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jimmy, what's going on in there? Jimmy! Oh, you can hear this through the door? I didn't realize, I'm sorry. Finally, Cliff Maine just surrenders. Cliff, if this is about the bagpipes... It's not about the bagpipes. Well, of course it's the bagpipes. It's the bagpipes and it's the not flushing in this, this optical migraine you call a business suit. So Kim uh, did actually get an interview out of her, uh, her lunch engagement after the motion. And uh, before she can respond to that, Jimmy makes her an offer. From me. I'll make you partner tomorrow. Consider that proof of concept. Wexler McGill, partners at law. She's intrigued, but has obvious reservations. What kind of lawyer are you going to be? I don't mean what kind of law are you going to practice. I mean, are you going to play it straight? Finally, Kim makes a counteroffer to Jimmy. We find an office. Share the housekeeping cost, the rent, electricity, everything. But I am Kim Wexler, attorney at law, and you are Jimmy McGill, attorney at law. Both free to practice as we see fit. The big takeaway from this episode is that uh, Jimmy is definitely out of uh, Davis and Maine, and uh, Kim and Jimmy have come to an understanding about what their future might look like. Here at Law Talk, we do a lot of videos answering common legal questions. We also do reviews of law in the movies and then on TV. We also share some of our more interesting cases. We're always putting out new videos. So if you like that, please hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell.